This thing looks like an abomination, but when it was released in 1990, it was a legitimately useful Game Boy accessory. Really only because it had a light in it and it magnified the Game Boy's already tiny little screen. I mean, the Handy Boy was a bit of an abomination, but we didn't know any better in the 90s. They also released a Handy Boy for the Game Boy Color, which was just as horrific looking. And even to this day, they never stopped releasing ridiculous accessories for Nintendo's portable consoles. Just not a Handy Boy. And I know that you guys are just so upset that there's no Handy Boy for the Nintendo Switch, but <laughs> you don't gotta thank me or anything. But I took all of these wacky accessories and I made a little Handy Boy of my own. The Handy Switch? about as practical as you can imagine and a bit grotesque, but honestly came out a bit better than I was expecting. It took a little work to get right and corners were cut, but I'm happy with it. It was a fun little project that definitely wasn't a waste of time. And you could follow along at home and make your own pretty easily. Hey, hey, where you going? Hey, come on, I just wish I thought it would be a fun thing. Like we made a thing, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Come here, come. This video is sponsored by Eon Gaming. What's up? Hey, you wanna play? I can't, there's like no local multiplayer. Oh yeah, you're right. Well, what about, no, yeah, there's like nothing that has co-op anymore. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Everything sucks now. Wait, what about that? Oh, good idea. But can, can we even plug it in? You know, I don't think we can. That was the scariest thing that's ever happened in my life. That was awesome. No, no, what is that? No, wait, don't touch that! Would you relax? It looks like, whoa, an HDMI adapter. The GCHD Mark II is a simple plug and play HD adapter for your original Nintendo GameCube, giving you the highest native resolution that you can get from the original hardware. And it's the easiest way to get your GameCube to work on a modern HDMI TV or display. Completely lagless, unlike other cheaper upscalers, and there is no external power needed. This one connection is all you need. They also have the Super 64, in case you want to bring your N64 action to your modern TV too. I personally like to pair these with an upscaler like the Framemeister. That way it brings the resolution from a native 480p all the way up to a full 1080p. And it's beautiful. Get your GCHD or Super 64 on Amazon using the links in the description below and bring your retro consoles into the modern era now. Look, man, this is fun and all, but can we at least turn the lights back on? It's called Atmosphere! Hey, I'm sorry. The Handy Boy has about four key features. It has the magnifying glass to magnify that tiny original Game Boy one inch screen. And the most important feature, probably the light to light up that screen. It has speakers as if you needed those soothing tones of a Game Boy to be any louder. And it had larger buttons that pressed down through the Handy Boy's plastic shell to the real buttons. And this horrible joystick that pressed the four sides of the D-pad. The original Handy Boy required a battery tap for power or DC pass-through. Ours is incomplete, but we do have a Game Boy Color version of the Handy Boy called the Handy Pack, which is slightly better designed in that it's all one chunk and it takes its own AAA batteries. But overall, it's the exact same concept with the same key features. The magnifier works, unless you have any reflections from overhead lights. The viewing angle is atrocious, but at least there's some light on the screen. Overall, I'm not sure these screen attachments make the screen any better. You'd definitely be better off with just a light. The audio quality is pretty good when it works. It's at max, that's not. Max, not. And the thumbsticks are just terrible. So you can clearly see that this is a bit of an abomination. So let's take those key features that make a handy boy what it is and bring them into the modern era. This all started with probably the most important bit, the magnifier. I was shopping around on Play Asia and I saw this thing and I immediately thought, I need to make a handy boy. It was pretty inexpensive and just every bit as ridiculous as you can ever imagine. I'm sure that 
Something like this solves a bit of a purpose for some sight impaired people. I remember back in grade school, I saw other kids with a device like this for screens or, or for books or something. But for me, it's just a big switch, it's funny. We need a base for this thing. And the most obvious choice was just to use a Satisfy grip. I have like a billion of these things. And you can have one too if you go to satisfy.com and use code WOLFDEN5 and get yourself 5% off the Satisfy grip. The original Handy Boy didn't have grips, but the Switch has a backlight, so it doesn't need a light. So let's add a feature that the Switch could benefit from. But also it gives you a nice little something to hold the whole thing together so the Switch can slide in and out of the unit. It absolutely needs speakers. I got a few different ones. These seem like a cool idea because they split in two and I thought maybe they could go on the ends and it would look just like the OG Handy Boy. But then I would either have to clip it to the Joy-Con or affix it to the grip somehow. This other one that I found would clip way easier and sit on top. So it's a slight design change from the original, but I think a necessary one. Plus it has LEDs in that glow blue. Isn't that neat? Too bad you're not gonna see them after this absolutely horrific paint job that I did. Also, this particular speaker is only USB powered. Not to worry though, using a USB-C to USB-A adapter works just fine and the audio even outputs just fine. It actually sounds pretty good. Now, is this better quality audio than just using the regular Switch speakers? Definitely not. Does that matter for the purposes of this video? Shut up and also stop asking questions. One slight issue that I had was that I wanted the speakers to sit above the switch, but I still wanted you to be able to slide the switch in and out of the unit. So I didn't want it to block it. So my solution was to just super glue a block of wood to the back. So now the speakers sit on top of that and they're a little more recessed so that the switch can slide into and out of the handy switch, no problem. Also, the magnifier has to come up from underneath the switch for this same reason, so that it doesn't block anything. But that's not a big deal either, as long as it doesn't block the USB-C port, which it did. So I made an adjustment. How much damage do you think this will cause this? Oh no. Ooh. I was very surprised how well this little hole fit. I was expecting a huge mess, but after some filing, it cleaned up really nicely. And this little USB-C to USB-A adapter fits absolutely perfectly and is the right size and everything. Also, I don't have this plugged in right now because when you plug it in, it uh, it, it, it doesn't, it, it won't sit right. <laughs> some of you may have noticed uh, this shirt. It's, it's been a while, but over at wolfdenapparel.com, we finally have a new shirt and I think it's perfect timing for what we're talking about. And finally, I got some Satisfy Rise Pads for the Nintendo Switch just to raise the thumbsticks a little. And I thought spray painting them that ruby color would really sell that handy boy look. I tried some other grips, no. but these held the paint the best. In fact, I spray painted the whole thing. I did an absolutely horrible job. I put very little care into the painting process. Well, I like took apart as much as I felt like and I taped off as much as I felt like. Whatever, as long as it looks decent on camera, I don't care and I'm sure that you don't either. Then I pieced it together, I screwed the magnifier to that block of wood on the back and now we're rolling. Wait, I almost forgot the, this little tiny detail. I decided to do a little bit of a shell swap on the Joy-Cons. I went with this Game Boy themed one mostly because I liked these ruby buttons. I thought that would sell the look a little bit. But I also kind of really like the D-pad that these shells came with. Now, the beige color doesn't match exactly. If I really wanted to, I could have spray painted these shells too. But, you know, the original Handy Boy has some mismatched beige. Hell, even the spray painting job that I did has like a yellow tint to it. Kind of similar to how like, 90s retro gaming plastic gets that yellow tint. It looks aged. It kind of ended up being a happy accident. Yeah, I used Animal Crossing Joy-Cons for the shell swap. I'm sure that hurts a lot of you deep down, but uh, my roommate's dog chewed up my Animal Crossing Joy-Con shells. So I've already grieved. Also the special edition Animal Crossing Switch, like isn't even rare anymore. Also, I kind of really like these Joy-Con. I might end up using these in my like normal, regular everyday switch. 
I was actually a bit worried about how this was all gonna come together while I was painting it. I was starting to have my doubts, but I'm extremely happy with the end result. It's even more ridiculous than I ever could have imagined. I'm actually a little bit surprised about how practical it is. Also, if I could do it over again, I would make this block of wood slightly longer so that the speakers can sit a bit higher. The giant speakers kind of block the shoulder buttons a bit, but the magnifier actually does a pretty good job of magnifying the screen. And it's comfortable to hold. It's not off balance or anything. It's actually fun to use. Not that I'll ever use this thing again. I think I'll stick to the regular old vanilla switch. Thank you very much. So what do you guys think about this abomination we've made here today, this handy switch? I mean, it sure would be fun to try maybe once. <laughs> Usually I end these things by saying, does this solve a problem that you have? But I can't, I can't, I cannot imagine. Anyway, if you liked this or you have any suggestions for other people who'd like to build their own, you can leave them in the comments below. You can add me on Twitter or any and all this other social media garbage down here. Thank you, Eon, for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in hooking up a GameCube or a Nintendo 64 up to your modern TV or monitor, don't forget to check them out. God, it smells like paint in here. Also, don't forget to check out wolfdenapparel.com. We got stuff now over there. Also, those hoodies are back if you want some of those. Of course, the most important thing that you can do to help support this channel is just subscribe, thank you, and turn on those notifications if you wanna make sure that you know when every single video goes live because you can't rely on YouTube for that. We're also over on twitch.tv slash wolfden, where I stream myself sometimes making stuff like this, sometimes just hanging out and playing some Mario games. And sometimes we do our podcast over there. But of course, the most important thing that you can do to help us, subscribe and share this video with a friend. A friend who's maybe into some of this. Maybe they had one of these handy boys. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a good week.